this lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can play songs on guitar, really almost any song, specifically almost any song in popular music with just two guitar chord shapes. This sounds gimmicky, this sounds too good to be true, but it really works to play songs on guitar this way because we can play what are called movable chord shapes. We can play chord shapes on the guitar that don't use open strings, so therefore they're movable. We can learn just two of those shapes and move them around to the correct root that they need to go to to play the right chord. You'll see exactly what I mean. And by doing that, we can unlock being able to play really almost any popular song. I'll play a bunch of examples in this video to prove it. The hardest part about this is the technique that it takes to play these guitar chord shapes. They're not easy chord shapes if you're a brand new beginner, but they're also not considered advanced chord shapes or advanced technique. It's not that hard to get used to them. So if you're interested in doing this, then just be patient with working on the technique and getting them down over time. And it will majorly pay off because you will be able to play pretty much any popular song with those two shapes all over the guitar. And that's what we're going to talk about the method of exactly how to do it here in this video. I'll also have a little advice at the end of the video for how to work on the technique part of it. But let's talk about the fun part first. Okay, so here are the two physical chord shapes. You're going to play your first finger on string five, and we can do this off the fifth or sixth string, but we'll just do this off of this note here, which is the third fret on string five, third fret on the A string. This is the note C right now. We're going to put our third finger on the fifth fret on the fourth string, and then we're going to put our pinky on the second string. We're going to skip a string, and this is one of the two shapes. This is a major chord right here. This is the root of the chord, the fifth of the chord, the third of the chord. You don't have to know that to play these. Okay, the reason this is tricky is because if you want to strum this with your hands or with a pick or anything like that, you have to mute the strings that are not the three strings that we're actually trying to play. So you have to touch the bottom of the low string a little bit so that you can get that sound that won't come through when you, when you strum the whole thing. You have to kind of be touching a little bit this uh, third string so that doesn't ring. You have to touch a little bit that top string and you're not pushing down. We're not barring this. We don't have to use that much pressure. We just want to be pushing down those three notes. So that's what's tricky about it. You can also pluck with your fingers on these. But that is the shape. And then the other shape, shape number two, take the top note and replace your pinky with your middle finger. And then we get a minor chord. The first one was a major chord. And then we get a minor chord. Now we have our first finger, third finger, and middle finger. And those are the two shapes that you need. This shape number two, the minor shape off the fifth string, can be used off the sixth string. Take all of these and move them all a string down, a string this way. And now it's a major shape. So shape number two can be used as minor when the root is on the fifth string, and it can be used as major when the root is on the sixth string. That will help so you don't have to jump all around. You could do this all off the fifth string, but you'll find that you probably want to use sometimes this shape number two with the root off the sixth string. We'll talk about what I mean with the root off of that kind of thing and how to find the right chords in a second. And like I said, the technique can be the hardest part, but be patient with it and it will pay off. And I'll help you out with that a little bit at the end of the video. So let's talk for a second about what these shapes can represent. Represent. This first one, shape one, is a major chord, and the root is here. So whatever note this is, and you can move this anywhere. So if we move it up two frets, whatever note that is, is the root of it. So that happens to be D, so this is a D major chord right now. But this doesn't have to be used for just D major. If you look up a song and it happens to say D major seven, or D seven, or D nine, or D 13, or D six, all of those things, you can just play this, because those are all types of major chords with extra information added. So you can just play this major one over that. For the most part, if you're looking up popular songs, you're just going to find major chords and minor chords, which is those two shapes we learned. But if you do see those extra uh, information chords, you can still just play these over them as long as you get major on a major type of chord or minor on a minor type of chord. So if you see minor seven or minor 11 or minor six or something minor, just use the minor shape. If you see anything that's a major type of chord, just use the major shape. It's totally safe to ignore those things, but if you don't want to ignore them, if you want to include those extra sounds, I'll point you to a resource at the end of the video where you can learn a few more shapes to get those sounds in there. But for the most part, uh, it won't be needed if it's if we're looking up mostly popular music. If you see something like a slash chord, which means it might say like D over A, D slash A, just ignore the slash part, ignore the denominator part of it, and just treat that first letter as the chord, so you just play D. By doing that, you are totally accurately playing the correct chord. We are not changing chords. We're not playing something that is not supposed to be there. 
we are just playing the essential information that is very correct and ignoring some extra information, the harmony will sound right. Singing over it will totally sound right. So we're not changing anything. We're just playing only the most core essential part of the music. That's what allows us to use just two shapes. And again, most of the time, those two shapes are everything we need and exactly the right thing. And you'll see what I mean with the song examples I'm going to show you in a sec. Okay, the process is so simple. You do have to find the chords of the song. So just Google that, look it up, find a resource you trust, and you can you know, try a bunch of them to find one that you feel like sounds right. But look up the chords, that's step one. Then with whatever chords there are, you find those roots. If it's major or minor, you can find the root of those chords along the fifth string. So you do have to um, have a resource to find the note names along the fifth string or know that. So you can use the map on the screen here that I have, take a screenshot of that or come back to this video or write it down. Uh, in your notebook or whatever you need to find the right note. So if it says that the first chord is F, you need to find F on the fifth string. And then if it's F minor, you play the minor shape. And if it's F major, you play the major shape. If it's a major chord, you alternatively can find the note name along the fifth string and apply the major shape. If it says A, you'd find A on the fifth string. And if it's A major, then you can apply that A major shape. Uh, along the sixth string. So you just got to map it out that way, find all of those spots. After that, you're ready to go. And, and like I said, the technique is the hardest part. Work on if you're going to strum it, work on if you're going to pluck it with your fingers or whatever way, uh, but you have the chords you need. So to prove this point and to play demonstrations and examples and really show you that this works, I'm going to take one of the biggest hit songs from five different decades. I'm just going to take those songs, not thinking about it too much ahead of time. I'm just going to find what's one of the biggest songs from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and 2020s, and play them with these two shapes. So here's the list that I came up with. I really just did this very quickly. I looked up what is the biggest song of the 80s, biggest song of the 90s, biggest song, etc., and then just chose one of the ones that, that came up as a list. And we're going to go in and play these and show how, yes, we can do it with just those two shapes. And it's totally accurate and sounds right. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to I know that you're gonna have it your way or nothing at all But I think you're moving too fast Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Possibly we could have had it all Rolling in the deep You had my heart inside of your hands And you played it to the beat Sometimes all I think about is you try this for yourself. You could try it on a hundred other songs, specifically popular music songs, and it's going to work on almost everything. So I encourage you to give it a shot. Like I said, the technique is really the hardest part. So if that is challenging for you to get them to ring nicely, to have the flexibility, the dexterity, the strength that it takes with the left hand to get these down, that, that takes time to develop, but it's very possible for anyone to get used to that. So be patient with it. And if you want some help with the technique training and conditioning and getting that uh, figured out over time, I have a warm up technique exercise that I think is the best warm up technique exercise for the guitar. And I have a video about it as well and a PDF download of it that you can get totally for free. There's a link in the top of the description to get that exercise, which will help your overall technique, especially your left hand, your strength, your dexterity, your flexibility, um, just all around. It's a single note exercise, but it helps with anything with all of that left hand 
um, ability on the guitar. It's an exercise that I literally do every day, every time that I practice. So if you download that, I'll send you a video that shows and explains it as well. Uh, and you can just get that PDF uh, for free. Use the link in the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash warmup. It's amazing how many songs you can use just those two chord shapes on to play it totally accurately the entire thing. But of course it doesn't work for everything, right? So for example, Bill Withers, uh, this is a different type of chord. This is actually, a, these are seventh chords and they're a specific type of voicing for those chords called shell voicing. So if we want to play more jazz harmony songs uh, or songs that use seventh chords or we need that extra color or those two shapes, the triad shapes, just don't sound right, the major and minor shapes, then we need just a few more to play literally anything else. So I have a whole other system for playing any jazz chord with only eight shapes, just eight shapes to play any jazz chord. All the crazy chords you might ever see in a jazz book, you can do that with just eight shapes. So I have a video all about that and you can link to that in the description, or if you're watching on YouTube, you can click on the screen here. There will be a link straight to it. I post a lesson video every week on a wide variety of topics, all designed to help us gain musicianship skills and express ourselves more freely. Next week's lesson is about the whole tone scale and how to play it on the guitar and why it exists and all of that. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.